so so uh, the highlights uh, from the past week were pretty amazing. Um, this was a week where I actually got put up in hotels a fair amount. Um, I went to, I was in Globe, and I spent a business day just trying to get some things lined up to get farther down my route. And um, I went into the Chamber of Commerce and told them what I was doing, and the, one of the women there was really excited about it. Turns out she's from Michigan. She's from the town next to my dad's town, because this is a very small world. <laughs> you didn't know that at already. She set me up with a hotel room uh, in Roosevelt, and I walked 18 miles to Roosevelt, 18.5 miles, and it was uphill, and it was downhill, and I thought my feet were going to die. And then I got there the next day and um, stayed at the hotel. I wasn't sure where to line up my next place, and I, I just was asking anybody. I went to the Boston uh, Lake House Grill, which is great. If you, one thing I never thought about as far as community is, is the local bar. The local bar is a community. I went in there, they bought me dinner, they made special vegetarian food that is not on the menu for me. Um, it was, if, if nothing else, extremely charming and happy company. The internet didn't work in there, but um, they basically helped me out for the rest of my, my leg through Roosevelt. Uh, and uh, my friend um, Stu Jenks came and joined me on my next leg of the walk, and we went up to the cliff and got to see some Native American cliff dwellings on Roosevelt Lake, it's Concho National Forest Land, and um, the lake was gorgeous, beautiful walk, and I only walked about 11 miles that day, and I went over the bridge by the dam, which is also really beautiful. And um, Duke just came along to, you know, to entertain me, and because he worries a little bit, he's somebody who I didn't even really know before I left Tucson, and he's a friend of my friend Tom Willett, and he saw me walking along the road one day, knew that I was doing the project and stopped to walk with me, and then he came again to come to Roosevelt, so that was really nice. Um, then, uh, I didn't have anything lined up to stay at the bridge, like that's as far as I made, it's like 11 miles. But it's government housing there, and it's a government project, so I knew I wasn't going to be able to stay there. And that evening before I walked, I just was talking to the woman who runs the motel, just chatting with her about fate and kindness and community, and she's like, just stay another night. So, yeah, so Sue gave me a ride back from Bridge. And I had, had another lovely evening at Boston's Lake House Grove, and then I stayed another night. And then I um, made it into Tono Basin the next day, and again, that was like 17 miles or 16 miles. It was a little long haul. Some, it doesn't sound like much in some ways, but it really, the difference between 14 miles and 19 miles is significant, <laughs> especially with uphill. Then, like the first week it was all back and legs and you know hips. Now my body point my feet are the ones that are like, You're crazy. We can't do this. <laughs> we hurt. You have to stop. And I don't. I just I mean one, I'm all pretty almost there and my cell phone reception is iffy. I just keep going and I make it into town. And I make my own phone call saying, Hi, help, I'm at mile number one fifty nine. Can you come get me? Some people do. So the next in Tano Basin I stayed with this great family. Um, they have continued to follow me and continued to help me. They called me today to say, Hey, we see you at the corner store here in uh, Forest Lake. So I've been in there lots of time and we've been watching you and rooting for you. And one of the highlights, not just staying with the family and how nice they were, but one of the highlights was their uh, brother, Mick, who's an adopted brother. He's actually Native American, but he was adopted by their family when he was four years old and raised as a brother. And he wanted to walk with me. He was so excited about it, he couldn't sleep the night before. It. And he walked 15 miles with me up a hill. And he started it by saying, I'm out of shape. I can't. I, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. This is going to be hard. And it was hard. It was definitely hard. He was definitely, you know, aching a little bit by the end. And he said, I have, he said, you have inspired me. He said, I have, 
I have never, I have not felt more proud than this in a long time. So that was really sweet. And we crafted what he called the taco, which is this big piece of, it scoops out like this, the road scoops out, they scoop through a mountain and the road goes through the middle. And he really wanted to reach that point, that was his goal, and that was about 12 miles in. And we got to the top and he's like, where's the meat in the taco? And I'm like, I'm waiting to say that all day. <laughs> Walking along with Mick and him talking about his father dying and this being a hard year and he gave up he gave up singing for quite a while. He likes to sing karaoke but he gets to go with his dad. And after his dad died, he didn't want to go anymore. And he said, You know what? I you've inspired me and I wanna I wanna he's like I I've been thinking about first doing like going on an American idol or something. Um, also that the night I spent in their household before we went walking, um, just the breakfast conversation, the dinner conversation, it was really, it was very sweet and very, you know, about community. Their whole community came together because they lost their home and somebody donated a house to them and everybody else put in the work to make their house a home again. You give them a new place to live. And part of it is that um, Mick's brother is in a wheelchair. So it had to be a wheelchair accessible house. And everybody, you know, it's just one of those great community stories. Everybody came together and made it happen. And then the other thing that's been kind of interesting for me is that I got to know a Mormon family back, and it wouldn't be important that they're Mormon, except this is a project on community and connection, back in Kearney. And they have helped me connect with people, like the people I stayed with in Payson on a Saturday night. I met them through her aunt who lives in Payson. And my next morning, Sunday morning, I'm walking down the road, and, and this gentleman just came to join me. He had his dog with him, and we started talking. And then he walked with me for a couple of miles, and um, we chit-chatted. And as we're going along, suddenly this car stops, and this woman runs out. She's like, Laura, hi. <laughs> and she came over and gave me a hug, and she said that she was Lisa's aunt who had helped arrange a place for me to stay. And they're, they keep sending out emails and through their church connections. And, and I have to say, I, don't, I have never really known very many Mormons. And I've heard negative things on and off over the years, and just says with any religion. And they have been nothing but kindness. And genuine and sweet with their children. It's a very family-oriented, they have lots of kids generally, and it's a very family-oriented church. And I've been kind of surprised because I didn't really know that much about them. And they've been really sweet with me and just included me in their family. And I played cards with their kids and hung out and I went to a, you know, a baseball game with uh, the family. So that so has been really neat. You know, I was hoping to use different, oh, and the, the, the important thing, I know I'm yabbering on. In Tonto Basin, the family that I stayed with there, the reason I got to know them is I contacted the local Aquinas Club. And this might be a good video if it looks decent. We, I went that night into, uh, they had bingo night, and I went in and they were setting up for bingo and I got to meet some of the people in the Kiwanis Club. Yeah, and so that was my connection with them, and they set me up with another place in Heber. It's my next stop. And they were the ones that set me up with the Whispering Hope Farm, which is really this week, so you don't have to include that, but um, it's, again, a really cool place. They take disabled horses and rehabilitate them and then they work with disabled kids at summer camp to have them ride the horses or work with them if they're, if they're not able to actually ride them they can help just you know work work on a ranch you know be on a ranch be on animals and be in contact with them so anyway lots of cool stuff and all the community and connection stuff is really it's really the way it works <laughs> So I, I had sort of had something sort of not really set up, but I'd asked them, and they had said, I guess they had RVs to rent. So I walked in there, and I said, um, I'm looking for a place to stay tonight. I'm walking across the country. I'm walking to Michigan. And the owner came over, and he had a full stick in his hand, which I thought was a good sign. that he was playing full with the customers. And um, they put me up for free, and they fed me dinner, and they fed me breakfast, and they told me stories. And if, if some of that feed will look kind of fuzzy and dark, but there was uh, an evening, because I used his computer to do that one instead of mine because I didn't, couldn't get internet there. But uh, there's a guy who's a biker from Michigan who had been to my hometown and they were incredibly rude to him at the Antler Bar. <laughs> so that might be funny to include. 
And Jake's Corner was made into a movie because somebody doing a project where he was walking across the country, having something to do with his dad being a member of the Cubs and losing his life to diabetes, and his son walked across the country for diabetes and raised his money. He stopped in Jake's Corner, and they had a videographer and you know, filmmaker with him, and it was made into a documentary. Well, the filmmaker liked Jake's Corner so much that he came back and made a movie there called Jake's Corner. Yeah. So, anyway, just interesting things. I go randomly into a bar, and it turns out somebody there had been to my hometown, and they were mean to him. Because he goes to the They said, we don't serve your kind here. And I'm like, oh, dear, who was it? 